Most people have never heard of pareidolia, but nearly everyone has experienced it. Anyone who has looked at the moon and spotted two eyes, a nose, and a mouth has felt the pull of pareidolia. It's the imagined perception of a pattern or meaning where it does not actually exist, according to the World English Dictionary. It's picking a face out of a knotted tree trunk or finding zoo animals in the clouds. German design studio Onformative is undertaking perhaps the world's largest and most systematic search for pareidolia. Their Google Faces program will spend the next few months sniffing out face-like shapes in Google Maps. This phenomena of seeing faces was also attributed to the very famous face of Cydonia that was found on Mars. The face was first imaged in detail by the Viking 1 and Viking 2 orbiters. 18 images were taken by the orbiters. Viking 1 launched on July 20, 1976, and Viking 2 orbited Mars on July 25, 1978. The striking likeness the apparent natural formation had to a face allowed the image to quickly gain notoriety around the world. The possibility of ancient ruins being on Mars is not a hypothesis held by modern science. And it is certainly not a scenario that NASA endorses. Neither does any other space-going nation appear to have any interest in investigating the possibility. Many conspiracies have surfaced over the years regarding covert operations, in search of exactly such ruins on our neighboring planets. Many claiming black operations have occurred, such as an Apollo 20 program with some rather convincing CGI hoaxes subsequently being created. Regardless, what a number of authentic researchers have managed to accomplish by just studying imagery of Mars and also of historical knowledge of the region held here on Earth is quite remarkable. Subsequent orbital imagery of the Cydonia region of Mars have attempted to debunk the face as just being a product of light angle. However, Thankfully, people did not let these debunking efforts dissuade them from further investigations of the area. Some researchers who were versed in the works of Zachariah Sitchin connected the location to the possible burial site a king. Recorded within the 10th Sumerian tablet, Sitchin had apparently translated a passage regarding a god known as Alalu, who requested upon death to be buried where he would be able to peer into space gazing upon earth forever. Although many claim Sitchin's vague understanding of the writings may have led to mistranslations, Sitchin became convinced that this 10th tablet also laid claim to the king being the constructor of the pyramids. People who knew these fragments of information actually connected a network of apparent extremely ancient pyramidal ruins resting very near to the face. These remnants of once great structures undoubtedly align with the star constellation of Pleiades. What is astonishing is that these ruins would not have been discovered without Sitchin's translations. Was Sitchin right all along? Is this really proof of ancient ruins on our nearest neighbor? The alignments are certainly compelling and must be more than just coincidence. As always, thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. Previously, we covered the strange but highly intriguing Cockno Stone an extremely ancient and very large Scottish stone covered with some of the best and most interesting ancient petroglyphs known in Europe. And although we put forward the preposition of it possibly being a map of as yet unknown star constellations, we were subsequently contacted by an independent researcher known as Sean Moriarty, who, with a small independent team, has been investigating the stone for quite some time, resulting in them deciphering the enigmatic cup and ring marks as a map of all the ancient sites within the surrounding area, including some yet to be unearthed. However, there is a little less known ancient stone, a stone which rests in North Carolina, deep within the mountains of Jackson County, and it has baffled all but a few who've examined it. Known as the Judicula Rock, it is a soapstone boulder covered with a plethora of strange petroglyphic drawings that archaeologists now believe to be over 3,000 years old. The native Cherokee Indians consider the site sacred and state that it's extremely ancient. The rock has been studied by researchers from across the world, but no one was ever able to decipher the bizarre petroglyphs on the stone, not even being able to connect them vaguely to any usual subject matter often selected for such ancient expressions. It's also cut using an unknown technique made by an unknown people. The stone sits at the base of a mountain that has a large vein of copper which runs under the site. With a variety of other rare metals and minerals present, 
This geological layout has often been used to explain the strange electromagnetic anomalies, which can be detected around the rock. The League of Energy Materialization and Unexplained Phenomena Research, or LEMA for short, a team of highly qualified individuals who explore paranormal and enigmatic subjects, may have actually cracked the code, and their research is certainly the most compelling proposition so far put forward, or quite possibly will ever be put forward. In August of 2002, Lima investigated Judacula rock. Upon comparing Judacula's markings to microscopic forms, specifically microscopic pond life, some of which exclusively native to the surrounding landscape, an artistic relationship becomes undeniable. Modern academia, or indeed known history, states that man first saw microscopic creatures in September 1674. These observations were made by Dutch scientist Anton van Leeuwenhoek. That means humans have only known of microscopic life for less than 330 years. If this is true, who or what could have created the Judacula stone's markings over 3,000 years ago? Was this stone made by a highly advanced ancient alien? Was it made with the purpose of sharing their research with a local population unable of such work? To date, the Lima theory is the only one which has been successfully corroborated elsewhere. Elongated skulls have been unearthed in many places on Earth, linked to ancient cultures globally. To this day, artificial practices of accomplishing this striking deformation can be witnessed among remote tribes in certain parts of the world. Thanks to this, and indeed the remains that have been found and studied previously, we not only now understand how this elongation is artificially accomplished, but also anomalies found on some specific and rather special specimens. For example, if one exhumes the remains of the ancient civilization of the Han culture, one is able to establish many things regarding the past technique, the individual skull which endured said practice. This can often be done by tracking the cranial napping found upon all human skulls. However, what makes others so intriguing, for example the Paracas skulls or the lost believed stolen skulls of Malta, this napping that one would expect to see is either absent or, if present, not of a deformed nature, suggesting that the previous owners of these craniums had this naturally from birth, leading to many hypothesizing that they were either a now lost subspecies or possibly an ancient alien visitor. If we track the provenance of these beings, one can also argue this increased cranial mass as a possible contributing factor in increased intelligence. Many of the ancient pharaohs of Egypt exhibit this, and indeed the skulls found at the ruins in Malta, with its astonishing acoustic properties. Their burials evidence of them once being valued members of these societies, but also the possible contributors to the advancements in technology and architecture found at these sites. The most unusual, however, those with no evidence of binding, have been found at many prehistoric sites such as the so-called alien mines along the banks of Lake Superior. Lloyd Pye has also made a lucrative business promoting the discovery of a curious humanoid skull he found a few years ago. Although not dismissed as a deformity, many still strongly believe it to be that of a human-alien hybrid. Regardless of the artificial binding which still occurs, questions remain. Why do some of these skulls appear to have been natural? Why is the ancient practice undertaken? Who inspired it? Why were the exquisite skulls of Malta stolen? Are we really looking at the remains of ancient alien visitors? It is an area of historical research which we find very intriguing. Just over a year and a half ago, we covered some astonishing discoveries once made in Malta. It is a structure that was undoubtedly once created by people, or indeed beings, of an incredible intelligence. Among its many impressive features is its seemingly perfect control of sound. 
When one stands in a certain place known as the oracle room within the structure and merely speaks at a normal volume, their voice is not only heard throughout the structure, but it is also, somehow, ingeniously amplified. Additionally, and perhaps most intriguing regarding the discovery which was once buried under eons of sediment, were the remains that were found there. As if once invaded and all its inhabitants killed, containing thousands of often headless corpses. However, there were a number of these bodies which not only still possessed their heads, but were described to look exactly like that, which today would be recognized as greys, a supposed race of alien beings that have long been rumored to have visited Earth and, according to some alternative researchers and whistleblowers alike, possibly inhabit underground bases here upon our planet. These bodies, unfortunately, are predictably now missing. However, this amazing ancient structure is not the only one to be found within Malta. There are countless anomalous buildings throughout the country, all seemingly explained away or brushed under the rug by modern academia. Tarxian temples making up a number of these so often overlooked sites. The Hal Tarxian Temple, for example, is the location of the Great Earth Mother statue a monument with blocks weighing up to 50 tons each. Furthermore, there are many other lesser-known or indeed academically shared ancient curiosities found throughout the temple complex, such as spirals and precise animal carvings, an extremely ancient form of concrete, hold stones, seemingly drilled out with the use of modern-day power tools, and much more. The Tarxian consists of three separate yet attached temple structures. The main entrance to which, being a modern reconstruction dating from 1956, when the whole site was excavated and restored due to the clearly exquisite nature of many of the decorated slabs discovered on site, they were salvaged and relocated for protection, now housed within the Museum of Archaeology in Valletta. Also of interest is that many believe Tarxian provides rare insight into how the megaliths were moved, apparent stone rollers were found left outside the South Temple. However, this long-attested theory does not explain how such people moved these stones over rough terrain, or indeed masterfully placed them atop one another. How a group placed far back within Earth's history achieve such awe-inspiring details within the construction of Tarsian. Where did the rumored alien remains go? Who stole them? Why such secrecy surrounding these remains? Was the site perhaps built with the help of an outside intelligence? Perhaps these were the remains of the builders, with later human inhabitants buried with their perceived gods. We find such sites, their advanced nature, and indeed the attached conspiracies, to be highly compelling. There are many ancient sites which we have already covered here on our channel that, regardless of the unexplained features we continue to expose, are little researched or indeed revisited by mainstream academia. These sites are predictably given an illogical explanation for their origin and creation, dismissed and ignored as if the book regarding their history is complete and thus closed from further study. However, there exist some sites that required such a long time excavation that many researchers, some funded, others with independent interests, were able to reveal simply astonishing features, ancient feats of engineering before they were attributed to groups who were simply incapable of achieving them. The Hypogeum in Malta is one such place, a place we have covered before, that regardless of the academic denial of unexplained discoveries, continues to be well known for the 6,000 ancient burials found within the ruins, with no less than six elongated unexplainable skulls, possibly attached to corpses discovered amongst them. These reported remains later vanished and are now utterly denied as having ever existed. Yet so many researchers became aware of these discoveries, later sharing this cover-up with the world.
the official museum and curator tasked with the responsibility of caring for the site and the countless remains found within, is still, to this day, inundated year by year with requests and calls regarding these unexplainable remains. So many, in fact, that the official body was compelled to put up an official statement regarding the lack of any such remains in their care, along with a denial of them ever having existed. However, there are many more anomalies, no less astonishing, still hidden within the hypogeum. Anomalies which are no less difficult to explain, or indeed deny as existing. Known as the Oracle Room, there is a place within this complex construction which, if one stands upon a specifically made altar, their voice can mysteriously be heard throughout, even at speaking level, as if amplified and complemented by the structure's entire design. Yet the most interesting thing regarding this incredible feature is the resonance in which it converts one's voice to and the effect this can have on the human brain. Known as the holy frequency, the hypogeum not only carries one's voice throughout, but does so at 111 Hz. Paul Devereaux, an archaeoacoustician, a professor from Cambridge University in the UK, has also discovered that the burial mounds of Cairns also resonated sounds at this mysterious 111 Hz. Devereaux investigated this intriguing relation of 111 Hz and found out something quite interesting. He realized there were many ancient texts describing beliefs which are based on a divine sound or divine frequency principle. According to Devereux, Pythagoras created his musical scale starting with the note A, which curiously resonates at the frequency of 111 Hz. Additionally, further research with MRI scans has shown that the brain switches off the prefrontal cortex and also deactivates the language center that is responsible for holistic processing, creativity, intuition, and inducing an emotional plateau at exactly 111 Hz. This reaction many field tests revealed resulted in an experience described as a divine level of meditation in a number of subjects. This trance, some now believe, allows one to get connected with the universe, God, or a creator. The question is, who knew such advanced knowledge so far back within antiquity? How were they able to create such stone structures which amplified one's voice to exactly this frequency? It seems preposterous to continue to attest that this amazing structure was somehow built by our lesser capable modern ancestors over 3500 years ago. With such amazing discoveries and cover-ups which have been made here, we feel that we have merely scratched the surface in modern times of the secrets this mysterious place must hold. It is a place which is undoubtedly highly compelling. Acoustics – something many are obsessed by, often splurging incredible amounts of money on technology in the pursuit of better and better sound. But acoustics is not merely limited to electric guitarists painting over which amp they should buy. It is also the studies of the properties of sound. A simple statement, yet it has far-reaching influences which reach not only deep into our psyche, but also into an inconceivably huge part of our lives and decision-making. Almost nearly all parts of our species' lives is influenced by it. Even looked at and used within the modern era as a main component within military weaponry. However, the term acoustic can also mean, and I quote, the properties or qualities of a room or building that determine how sound is transmitted in it. And this area is the one which we find tremendously interesting, as during our ongoing and in-depth research into many sites all over the world, coming to know a vast amount of interesting factors regarding a large swath of already studied or rather exposed sites within the modern mainstream. The Hypogeum in Malta being one of them, an extraordinary site that has been explored in detail and discovered to possess incredible acoustic abilities. Abilities which have been found at the site in question within this video. Yet we feel the connections between these remarkable sites need to be looked at closer. 
and the possibility that a now lost yet highly advanced, seemingly acoustically obsessed ancient civilization, not only once existing, becomes ever more likely, but that they succeeded in discovering incredible things, things we are yet to fully understand regarding acoustic resonance, so much so that it allowed them to be the original builders of these marvelous structures. It was first thought that seven circular structures, which are located around the sacred hill and on the neighboring hills, represented the Sun, Moon, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, and Mercury. However, interestingly, it was later hypothesized that there may be a grave monument and a sacred area still preserved here. Interestingly, it seems although it is thought that pagans in Somatash climbed up the sacred hill within permitted history, the team have not attributed them with the achievement of creating the sites. This, to us, seems highly unusual. So much so, we may actually be witnessing a change in attitudes within academic study. If so, this is an enormous victory on ours and, more importantly, truth's behalf. Additionally, they have seemingly, bravely, put forward a quote which we also find highly intriguing, for it is one we feel which would have once been dismissed, yet another grain of inclination that strategies and most important attitudes within academic pursuit is altering. Quote, the archaeoacoustic research group known as SB asked us to take into consideration that it is possible to perceive a magnetic field by empirical observation and in the same way to pursue a higher state of consciousness during meditation or rituals in the presence of strong infrasounds. They continued, If one were to extend this research to the ruins of the other six temples, it may provide further insight." End quote. We find these claims interesting, especially due to the popularization of the acoustic knowledge regarding the hypogeum in Malta. Additionally, ours and others repeated reports of the mass burial found there. Nearly 7,000 separate remains discovered there some claimed as seemingly having alien origins, found buried at the Hypogeum, yet is, ironically, a story and discovery which has been long attempted to be buried itself. Yet these acoustic properties are undoubtedly incredibly intriguing, possibly groundbreakingly important, especially when one considers it is accompanied with the claim of undisturbed burial grounds and when one considers what was claimed to have been found among the burial in Malta, a discovery we have previously covered. Somatash, within Turkey, is undoubtedly highly compelling. <laughs>